Hi everyone, we're going to show you how to do the CD text and CD track markers once you've finished editing your project. So here's your stereo mix down. First thing we're going to do is create a project, a um, album marker here. So there's our album marker. We then go into the DDP editor so that we can edit that marker. Just double click on it. That brings up edit album marker. So we type in our album title. That's what's going to show up on a CD player. The performer or performers with commas. Songwriter. In this case, the songwriter and the composer are the one and the same thing, so I just cut and paste that. The arranger, if there's an arranger of the music or an editor. Message, if you want. The identification is the catalog number. The genre is a pull down menu, in this case, classical. And the language, pull down menu, English, in this case. And the UPC code goes here. And that's it. So there's your there's your album marker. Now we're going to go put in the first track marker. So I go to the beginning of the music here, and I put in the first track marker, that black marker. And now um, I can edit that marker first here, and then I, the rest of them I'm probably going to edit in Excel because I can copy and paste much faster. But let's open up the DDP editor again. You'll see there's there's the album mark marker we put in, and here's the first index point. So let's double click that and enter the information. So the title of the first piece is Clarinet Concerto in A Major KV 622, and the tr colon track number one is Allegro. Performer or performers with commas. Songwriter, composer is going to be the same as that, the arranger, or the editor of the music, a message, and then an ISRC code. In my case, this is USQCC 200001. Okay, so there is that track marker with all the information. Now, if we had to type that over and over again 10 times, that would be somewhat tedious. So instead, what we're going to do is just put the markers in, and then we can type and copy the information in Excel. We'll put the markers in so we get the time code right. So first we'll zoom in. Here's where the second movement starts. Let's find the spot we want. That's about right. Let's move it back a little bit. I want about two seconds of lead in. So that's about right. So we'll put a, a marker right there. Um, Let's go to the third movement now. Just, we can scroll out, scroll in, there it is. And about there. And that's just about right. Start the track there. Now, the end of the piece, you, you can put an end of track marker here. You don't have to, but um, it's useful for radio stations. That'll cause your CD player to count negative time in the gap, in the digital gap. And then here's the beginning of the next piece. So that's the, new, the next track on your CD. Now if we go, there's the second movement, but let's see, I think... Yeah, we want the track marker to be about there. Let's go to the third movement, probably about there. It's about right. There's our third movement. And fourth movement. Probably about there. And then that's the end of the piece is there. So we put end of track marker. And then Don Giovanni starts here. Go to the end of Don Giovanni, end of track marker. Magic flute starts here. 
and the end of ma Magic Flute is, is the end of the CD, so we don't need to put a marker there. No end of track marker needed at the end of CD. Okay, so there, all of our markers are ready to go. So now what we're going to do is export them. You notice the start of track markers are black, the end of track markers are white. We're going to export, it, it'll just export the start of track markers, and then we can edit those in Excel. So to do that, we go to the marker menu, save load CD markers, we're going to save. And we'll save it in a file called pqmarkers.txt. It's all saved. Now we go into Excel. And in Excel, we just say File Import. And we're going to import a tab delimited text file. There's text file, import. Choose the file. Next, next, finish. This is important. Click on Properties here and uncheck Adjust Column Width, because I already had the column width set up here in my little CD marker template. Click OK, click OK, and there it is. Okay, so there's all the time codes of the markers that we put in. And you can see the first track was already done. Now most of this is the same. The performer is going to be the same, and songwriter, composer, and arranger. It's actually the same on all these tracks. So I can just now copy this down by dragging in standard Excel style, instead of having to type all of those 10 times. Now this um, is going to be the same. Uh, these USR, ISRC codes, you can also drag down, and it'll automatically increment them. So you'll see it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's all set. You have to do a little bit of typing for the pieces, obviously. This first concerto is three movements long, so I copy it down. Now I can just type in the movement names. The second movement is Adagio. The third movement is uh, Rondo Allegro. And that's all done. And then you can continue on and type the rest of the stuff. I won't do that right now. So once you're done doing that, you just save this file out doing Save As. And you're going to save it as a tab delimited text file. Let's save it into the same file we used before. And we'll go down here and choose Tab Delimited Text. And click Save. It'll say Replace. And OK. So we now save that out. Now we can go back to Reaper. And we can load that in, and it'll, it'll replace the markers that we have here. So we just go to Markers, and we say CD Markers Load. And Fixed means it'll load it to the same place where it was. If you say Load a Cursor, it'll load them relative to the cursor. So we say Load Fixed. We choose the file. And there they are. So all the markers are loaded in with all the text. And now you can look at those in the DDP editor and see all the stuff that I entered in Excel. But it's a lot easier to enter in Excel and a lot quicker. So we've now entered all the CD markers, or almost all of them. And so now to output this, we select the track with Shift-Option-Command-T. Um, I'll turn back on the keystroke so you can see that. OK, so I'll do that again. Shift-Option-Command-T to select the track. And then we go to File, Consolidate, Render, Export, Export QWave CDT. Since I've rendered this before, I'm going to say no, just for speed right now. That's the file I rendered, the WAV file. Click that. And there it is. It's done. It's exported the Q, the CDT, and the PQ listing files already with all the information from those track markers. So if I go out to the Finder, I can see those, um, those uh, track markers here. If I go into the master, QA of CDT, here's the uh, image PQ text. So there's a listing of all the markers and with, with sample accurate stuff or frame accurate stuff. OK, now, to make that into a uh, uh, DDP, I just go into a program like like uh, DDP Creator from Sonoris or any anything that accepts standard input, and I do import Q sheet. I'm going to discard the one I have up here, okay? And that image Q file that it just created when we did the export is right here. 
we open that and immediately all the information we entered in Excel and, and Reaper is, is here, all the PQ code. And the file is ready to generate a DDP image. You say export DDP image and you're done. That's it. Five minute process to do the complete CD demastering of a, of a typical CD in Kohler Classical.